surf this. Hey guys, welcome back to Clash with Corey. If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on that notification bell. Check out the details below my videos when you get a chance. I've got good resources for you in there. I have links to my Discord server. I have links to WHF's recruiting Discord server. Also, I have links to WHF's live streamers. So check that out when you get a chance. Let's get into this video. This is going to be a basic Lava Loon video, all right? If you already know what you're doing with Lava Loon, if you're pretty well versed in it, this video is probably not going to help you much. This is for beginners. This is covering the basics. This is not advanced strategy. This is basic. So if you're not an air guy or your air needs improving, uh, this is going to be the video for you. It's going to be slow. We're only breaking down one base, one attack. We're going over a lot of strategy stuff. So, you know, if you got ADD and, and you just can't hang in for that and it's not worth it for you, go check out some of my other videos lot more action in there this is going to be a lot of strategy about lava loon how to do it all right we're going to use a town hall 11 example in this however the principles that we're going over in this video are going to work for town hall 9 town hall 10 town hall 11 town hall 12 because the mechanics of lava loon does not change loon path you know hound tanking and pathing doesn't change loon pathing doesn't change that's the same all right those mechanics are the same we just happen to be using a town hall 11 example today uh just when you get up into town hall 10 11 and 12 you know you're gonna have some more objectives to take out that's all just some more defenses stuff to take into account loon pathing and the principles stay the same so with that let's get into it first thing you're gonna to want to do to make your life easier with lava loon is get some value okay what is value first of all pathing loon pathing is huge i think it's more important than anything else that being said you still need to get some other value just to make your lava loon portion easier but pathing i believe is by far the most important all right we're going to go over what exactly pathing is in just a second but, but we're still talking about value so some other value that you're looking for is going to be the enemy cc if it's a damaged cc all right that's a big threat to lava loon enemy queen can be a big threat to lava loon although she's not necessary none of these things are necessary they can all be dealt with but you got to take care of some of them uh, if you want to make your life easier if you can take care of a lot of them your life's going to be a lot easier so enemy cc queen sweepers splash damage and air defenses all right and those examples go over all those town hall levels that we talked about earlier now if you start getting up into higher level town halls uh then obviously infernos if they're set to multi uh big threat all right if they're set to single target that's not a big threat to your loons you know like oh it's gonna pop your hounds or your hounds are gonna pop pretty early on a town hall 10 base or above anyways uh so i'd much rather lava loon single target infernos than multis multis however can be dangerous so that's a that's some big value there eagle artillery is big value and then of course the giga test the giga bomb at town hall 12 is is huge value as well um so if you're at that town hall level, you have to worry about those. Those are some other big value things that you need to look at. All right. Now, let's get back to pathing. I said that pathing is value, and it really, really is. Because if you look at this base, all right, loons go to the next nearest defense, okay? So let's just imagine we're going to mass lalo this thing. We got loons coming in right here, right here. So these loons over here are going to path over here around the side. That's fine, all right? This loon right here, here, and here, they're going to be moving this way, this way, and this way. And look, all of a sudden, we've got this area in here that's untouched, okay? Because it doesn't have good pathing to it. It's got dead space in there. It happens to be a really dangerous building with dead space, a multi-target inferno. I guarantee if you have a bunch of loons dancing around a multi-target inferno, they're going to get roasted you're done okay so how can we prevent that um from being an issue is by getting value cutting out a big chunk of the base so example trevor on this attack he's gonna cut out like all this stuff right here and all of a sudden look at our loon pathing not too freaking shabby okay all right it gets a little wider right here and uh, but what he's gonna do is he's gonna bring in a special group of oh my i didn't even know i could i don't even know how i did that hold on whoa still getting used to this uh this new uh, screen markup app right here all right so look at this section right here this is going to get pretty wide right here and you don't want your loons to fan out and spread out because they're going to have a tendency to miss defenses they're going to spread out they're going to have to backtrack that's messy we don't want to do that so how can we keep this core group pushing in through right here if we bring in another group right here with the haste and take care of these defenses then all of a sudden your core group gets to move through a nice 
thin path again right there so that's the name of the game this is a this is an attack about momentum all right that's why when you start your loan drops you're going to start off by dropping more loans you don't want that core group that first group to die out you want to go a nice strong first group by dropping four or five or even six uh loans at a time on those first one or two or maybe even three drops um that way your core push is is that much stronger and then you're adding loans in on the side to reinforce that that push because if that first push dies your momentum is gone and your attack is dead all right it's an attack about momentum and you help that by creating good pathing and uh and then smart hound deployment and loon deployment we'll get into that a little bit more later let's go ahead and check out let's go let's let's get this attack started let's see the value he's going to get on this all right i already told you how you know the pathing how to make your pathing better make your base skinnier um and that sort of thing now look at the objectives why did he use lava loon on this base look at we all the objectives we talked about earlier and boom we got two sweepers in here we got an air defense splash damage bunch of bunch of uh other defense in here including expos eagle artillery in here oh my gosh could probably might be able to reach another sweeper so he's looking to get some huge value especially with both those sweepers enemy cc enemy queen he's getting a ton of value in here and when he cuts out that big chunk of the base he's going to achieve really good pathing which if you remember that's the first item of value that i told you about if you can create great loon pathing that's arguably the most important thing for a successful lava loon raid that being said, all the other objectives we talked about also important. The most, the more of those you can get taken out at the same time as setting up good pathing, the, the better your chances of success are. See, he even sent his warden in with that kill squad group because he saw that some of his values in there pretty deep. His eagle was in there pretty deep. Those multi-targets were in there pretty deep. He wanted to get as much of that as possible, so he sent the warden in with the kill squads so that he'd have a better chance of getting the most of that as possible. All right, now right here we're going to pause. Humongous value. Got the eagle. Got so much stuff. Created great pathing. Uh, it's exactly the pathing that we were looking at either, earlier. All right. Now we're going to stop. We're going to talk about hounds and loons. All right. What is the job of a hound? All right. Job number one, tanking for your loons. Job number two is pulling air traps, especially red bombs and air skellies. But red bombs are the big ones. Now, where are red bombs usually? Usually, people are going to put them by air defenses. Or, excuse me, not by air defenses. That was lying. That was a misspeak. Usually, they're going to put them by wizard towers. So, when you're pathing your hound into the base, first of all, you're going to look at the ranges of defenses. Where are they going to be at? And you'll see that this wizard tower range goes right up to the edge of that air defense. It doesn't have to cover the whole air defense to be tanked. Because if you send in a hound from this direction, it's going to park on this side of that air defense that that wizard tower is touching. So if you park, if you send in a hound that way on that one, uh, that wizard tower is going to be stuck on the hound that is stuck on that air defense, leaving it not touching your loons. And that's huge. Let's check this wizard tower defense. Okay, now that one touches the other side of the air defense. So if we drop a hound from right up here to path across that wizard tower and pull those red bombs and park on this side of the air defense that that wizard tower uh, range is stuck in, that's going to be an excellent hound drop location because it's pulling the bombs on its way in and it's tanking for those defenses not just the wizard tower i mean it's also going to be tanking archer towers any sort of air expos any sort of air targeting defenses in range but wizard towers are a big one like i said splash damage is a big deal because uh, it can do damage to a big group of loons uh, at a time okay so look at that first group of loons he dropped. What was that maybe five loons? Maybe six? I don't even know. But just like I talked about in the beginning, your first couple drops are going to be much heavier than your next few drops. So his first drop, five or six loons. His next drop after that, four or five loons. Just like we talked about, you got to go heavier on those first few drops to establish that momentum. If your first group of loons dies out, you're in trouble. And then after that, let's move up here. Then he's got a group of three loons coming down uh, to support and hit those side defenses and then a group of two loons and two loons so as he goes through the base he has less and less loons that he's dropping on those now so uh wow it's going really nicely those air defenses and the wizard towers the way that they were placed through the base um the hounds are tanking so much of that stuff it's not even funny so he doesn't even really aside from that very first haste to use he doesn't even have to use another haste for the rest of it just because they're tanked so well by those air defenses now if you look at this group up here we got a much larger group of loons coming in with their very own haste just like we talked about earlier he wants to take out here let's draw on it he's trying to take out these three defenses 
so that this group right here moves straight through a nice path without fanning out. All right, now aside from taking out these defenses right here, this group of loons is also going to come in and join the core group for a nice big push through the rest of the base. All right, he went heavy on the beginning, so his core group doesn't die out, and through the rest of the attack, he sent it in loons to take out outer defenses, especially wider sections of the base, and then they can join up with that big group as well, and that's where we get the momentum of our lava loon attack. All right, that's uh. Still trying to use this uh, screenwriting tool. I just downloaded it, so I apologize if I'm a little clunky in the operation. So very nice rage there. Why did he choose to use a rage right there? Because he had some really high hit point defenses there, expos, that sort of thing. We're going to pause again. I told you this is going to be detailed. Now on the back side of this base, all right, he had a multi-target inferno, and like I said, that's dangerous. It's so dangerous because a wizard tower can be tanked entirely by a hound. A multi-target inferno cannot. It's got five separate beams, all right? A hound can only tank one of those beams at a time. Those other four beams are going to be on loons. They can't be tanked very effectively, but they can be healed through just fine. So even though that's really dangerous to have on the back side of the base, all you got to do is bring a heal and use it right where he used it to negate that, that multi-target inferno entirely. All of a sudden, it's not doing anything. You know, it's hitting loons that are in a heal. So... Very, very good spell choice there on the back side of that base, bringing that heal for that multi-target Inferno. He's got more than enough loons to get through the rest of this. He doesn't need the rest of those hastes, because uh, this base is already wrecked. It's not a good base design. It's not, obviously not a CWL base design. Uh, we're just using it as an example uh, for, you know, it's, it is a good example of a base that's really easy to lava loon, and a good example of a base for you to practice on. You know what I mean? If you're trying to learn this, trying to, you know, trying to learn air definitely a good base to practice on all right i did forget something um and it is important so i'm gonna go back and i'm gonna cover it and that's gonna be the last thing that we're gonna cover on this video but we're gonna play this again and we're gonna fast forward because this is a really important thing to note on this we're just gonna times for it until we get it where we need to get it crazy value he got on that kill squad nice hit trevor and as soon as this kill squad's done with value, we're going to pause it and talk about the last thing that I want to talk about because it is very important. All right. So we talked about making that nice path left through the base. All right. Ideally, it's going to look like a C shape or an L shape. But either way, the skinnier the better. If you have a wider section, deal with it with some side loons. We talked about all that stuff. That's great. But we never talked about where to start your Lalo. All right. If we look at, you know, this base, the L shape, or this one's kind of a C shape, you're always going to start at the tip of the L or the tip of the C. You're never going to start in the middle of it, okay? What does that mean? Right here, we're going to start. He's going to start right here. Excellent spot to start. Now, he also could have started from this side right here. Pretty decent pathing. Um, some good tanking. If, if he wanted to get that multi-target out of the way earlier, uh, he could have gone from this side too. One place you would never want to start your lava loon is going to be right here. All right, here's the C shape. All right, we never want to start in the middle of the C. All right, why is that? Well, that's easy because if you start in your loons right here, First of all, you're going to get the section taken out, sure, but then they're going to be splitting up. They're going to be splitting up. They're not going to stay in one group. They're going to split up. All right, first of all, that divides your force, and you're not going to have a, uh, as much momentum if you're splitting it up, your group up into half. Second of all, it's going to be a lot more difficult to get spells down on them. Um, you know what I mean? You have two separate groups going through the base at once, and you're trying to get effective spell drops down on one, so it's a lot more difficult. Uh, but it's also not smart because you're dividing your troops. You're losing your momentum. It's not a good way to go, okay? And, and, and third of all, you got no control over the fact of, you know, I guess if you were assured that your loons would split evenly and handle both sides and they're pretty thin, you thought you could do spells, that'd be fine. But you have no guarantee your loons are going to split evenly. You know what I mean? What you're probably going to end up with is three quarters of your loons going one way and only a quarter of your loons going the other way and dying out. So hopefully your three quarters group makes through, but then they got to go all the way across the base uh, to a wider section. You know what I mean? It's just we, you never start in the middle of the C or the middle of the L. You just do not you always start on the ends of the c or the ends of the l because that way um it's a lot easier to control you're gonna have a lot more success that way so with that 
I hope you guys liked the video. I definitely tried to cover all the basics of La Balloon. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments down below. But though, honestly, those are hard to keep up with. If you really have more questions, you need some more uh, individualized help, join my Discord server. A uh, lot of lot of people, lot, there's several WHF members in there and other guys from competitive clans that are willing to help you with attack planning, answer questions. So join the Discord server. I hope to see you there. And I'll see you guys in the next video.